Hello my beautiful girls, I am so excited that you are here today watching this video. You know the drill, I have my kombucha in my notes, we are ready to go. We are talking about five green flags in men today. So these are the qualities that you want to look for when you are starting to date or maybe you are thinking about being with someone long term. If they have these green flags, you can get really excited because they are probably someone who's going to make a great partner for you. I know that a lot of you did not have a mother or an older sister or someone to guide you and really help you in your relationships. That's what I'm here for and I'm so happy to be by your side. Let's get straight into the video. So quality number one, if you are with a man who is able to hype you up and wants you to be the highest and best version of yourself, major, major green flag. And there are two parts to this. So. If your man is complimenting you, if he is cheering you on as you are successful in your career, if he wants you to level up and grow, and he is able to give you the verbal affirmation to do this, that is such a green flag. And the reason behind this is because it shows that he is secure in himself. He is secure enough in himself to know that you can blossom and glow, and he does not need to feel threatened by that. He does not feel threatened by your success, by your beauty, by your charm your beautiful feminine energy, he hypes you up and wants to see this in you. The reason why if he is insecure and he does not hype you up, it is such a red flag. And the reason is because he does not feel worthy of you. He is going to sabotage the relationship in some way by seeking outside validation, by trying to tear you down, by trying to hold you back from being able to blossom. He does not feel worthy to have you by his side. Another part of this too is him wanting you to be your best self and really be the best in all areas of your life. The reason for this is being such a green flag is because this man knows that he is worthy of you in a way where if he pours into you and you level up, he does as well. That it's the relationship as a whole that blossoms if you blossom. There are a lot of men who um, or there's a lot of women who I hear that they get dressed up for a date night, their man says, that's nice, or they don't compliment them at all. Pay attention to these things because it shows that the man is not comfortable with himself enough to know that he can give you the confidence and reassurance to really be your best self. It is a huge green flag if your man wants to see you win, if he is hyping you up. He knows that he is worthy to have you by his side. Quality number two is he has a growth mindset and he is doing inner work to heal. And what this means is your man has dealt with past trauma and wounds and he is not bringing that hurt into the relationship. This is probably one of the most important qualities. By the way, to a side note, um, all of these qualities that I'm talking about, they're coming from my personal experience, from my mentorship, from the knowledge that I've gained from studying culture, studying masculine and feminine polarity and energy. If these do not align with you, you do not have to use them. So back to what I was saying. Signs that your man has not healed or dealt with his trauma or wounds is he is easily triggered. Another sign of this is he does not know how to communicate effectively to you. He is emotionally unavailable. He cannot hold space to have healthy, mature conversations. Another sign is he starts to project onto you. He starts accusing you of the craziest stuff. If your man does any of these things, it shows that he has some healing to do. Someone who has a growth mindset is one of the most attractive things because they are constantly leveling up and getting better. One way that you can tell if your man is doing this, ask him, has there been an experience in your life that has shaped you into the man that you are today, that has inspired you to heal and grow? His answer will tell you everything that you need to know. If he does not have an answer to this, run. He has not learned from anything and he is not committed to growth the way that you are. I'm guessing that is you if you are here watching this video trying to be the best version of yourself that you can be. You're on your healing journey. You're leveling up. You need someone who can match you at that level or else it's going to hold you back. The relationship will not be in balance. Also guys, if you're watching live, welcome. I'm so happy that you're here. I do see your questions and I will take all of those at the end. So. Your man, he does not have to meditate daily. He does not have to know his attachment style. He does not have to have a perfect level of healing, but he has to be willing to try. If he has that growth mindset, if he's trying to better himself, this is such a green flag. So 
One way that you can tell is if your man is doing any of the following. If he is reading personal development books, if he's listening to podcasts, if he has healthy male mentors, if he is in therapy, these are green flags that he is committed to growing and healing. Therapy, I know that it is so controversial. Personally, I am in therapy because I want to be the best version of myself for my man, for myself, and for my future family. I know that my past has, and my childhood was not 100% perfect. If yours was, then you probably don't need therapy, but I guarantee nobody in the world has had a perfect life. It is so helpful to have someone who has that outside knowledge and guidance to really help you turn inward and reflect on your life and heal and grow, work through those triggers and really evolve into the best version of yourself. So if your man is consistently trying to be the best version of himself, green flag. If he thinks that he is already the best version of himself and he doesn't have any more learning to do, run. Another green flag is if he is working on himself daily, it is going to show that your future problems will be able to be dealt with in a way better way. That's why having this growth mindset is so, so important. Moving on to quality number three. This one it is probably one that you guys have heard before, and it is having good friends. Does your man have good friends? Before you skip, you need to know the two reasons behind why this is probably the most important quality that I'm going to talk about. Number one is if your man has good friends, it is going to guide your relationship to a better level. Let's say that you guys have a problem, which will happen one day. When your man goes to his friends to get their advice, to get their solutions, if your man has a friend who is immature and has a very low level of consciousness, guess where he is going to guide your relationship? Down. He is going to guide your man to take the easy way out. He does not genuinely want the best for your man. And he is going to cause the relationship to be destructed. Your man that has good friends, this is what's going to happen. He's going to push your man to look at himself in the mirror. An honest and real friend points out where you are going wrong. If your, friend, if your man has a good friend, he is going to want the best for your man and for your relationship. He is going to guide your relationship to a better place because of this. The second reason why having good friends is so, so important is because it's a reflection of the type of friend that you are. Your man, he is more than just your romantic partner. He is your best friend for life. If your man has good friends, it shows that he is a good friend, which means he has the potential to be your greatest friend. If your man has good friends, major, major green flag. Step number four, or quality number four, is your man believes in a source that is higher than himself. What this means. Does your man go to a higher source for guidance and for wisdom, or does he go to himself? Personally, I have a relationship with God and a relationship with Christ. I am Christian. I really value when a man has this quality and this side of spirituality to himself because he is not led by his ego. He is instead led by the values and integrity that come from that higher source. I respect everyone's religion and their own personal belief. For me, if, I ha if I'm with a man who does not share that same level of spirituality, I do not believe that it will work long term. The key to long lasting relationships is having similar values. Let's say that um, for me, I love God and I love other people and that is a value that leads my life. When problems arise in my relationship, I am going to be led by my values to make a decision. With my future kids, with my future family, my values shape my decisions. If you and your man have very different values, you are going to be very out of sync, out of balance when you're making decisions. It's going to cause a lot of problems. That is why they say do not get into relationships where you are equally or where you are unequally yoked, meaning that you are not at the same level of spirituality. For me too, I look outside and I know that there is a God. I Just the fact that the earth is the perfect distance between the sun and the moon where we do not burn and we do not freeze, it tells me that there is a higher source that put me here for a purpose. If there is a man who has the same belief as me, it is very, very attractive. As soon as someone tells me they believe in the Big Bang Theory or they don't believe that there's an afterlife or a source higher, it is a turnoff for me because I know that our values and our mindset is completely different. In the short term, it might feel so good to be with someone who maybe doesn't share the same value with you, but you want someone long term who does. It is going to shape the relationship major, major ways. 
so what else did I want to say about this yeah so um, the last quality and this is my favorite to talk about because this is where more of the feminine energy comes in green flag number five in a man does he have strong masculine energy and does he lead the relationship here is how you will tell do you feel comfortable letting your feminine, your soft, your girly side out? If the answer is yes, your man probably has strong masculine energy. I work with so many women who say they are in relationships where they feel that they are leading. And it's not that they are in their masculine energy and that's the problem. It's that they are with a man who does not have a strong level of masculine energy. So it almost encourages the woman to bring that out instead. Here's some ways that um, you can tell. Is your man initiating contact? Is he planning dates? Is he pursuing you? When you go to him with problems, does he immediately come up with a solution? Or does he run away or leave you to find the solution? Do you feel that you can cry? Do you feel that you can be your weird, your silly, girly self? Or do you feel that you are judged for that? These are signs that you can tell if your man is in his masculine energy. That saying that's all over TikTok right now, passenger princess, it's so much deeper than that as I take a look at it and here's why. The passenger princess, if you don't know what it is, it's just the idea of being the girl in the relationship that sits in the passenger seat, is, her mind is just wandering as her man's driving, she doesn't have a clue what's going on but she's enjoying the presence of her man and she's just loving being there. The reason why this is so important and such an indicator of masculine and feminine energy, the woman who is the passenger princess is relaxed in her feminine energy and she trusts that her man is guiding her and him to the final destination and that he's going to get them there safely. The passenger princess is how you want your relationship dynamic to be. So you don't have to be in your feminine energy 100% of the time. That's a very common misconception. You can still plan things, you can still lead, you can still text your man first, but not all of the time. Otherwise it, show, it throws the relationship dynamic off. You do it when it feels good for your body. If you have that desire to maybe plan a romantic date night or to text your man or call him, do it. Don't always think that your man has to be the one to do it, but most of the time he will. And the reason is because he naturally feels good doing this because he's in his masculine energy. When your man is in his masculine energy, you are going to feel so good thriving as a feminine energy. The key to feminine energy is feeling good, being in your body, being present, feeling beautiful and adored and loved. So a healthy masculine man, he will create the space for you to feel this way. That is the five green flags. I'll give you a quick recap. Um, oh my gosh, what was number one? Number one was, oh, does he hype you up? Does he want you to be the highest and best version of yourself? Number two, does he have a growth mindset and is he committed to healing and growing? Number three, does he have good friends? Number four, does he believe in a source that is higher than himself or does he get guidance from only himself and his ego? And number five, does he have strong masculine energy where you can relax as the beautiful feminine energy in the relationship? So these are the five green flags of a healthy masculine man. Now I am going to take some of your guys' questions and chat with you for a bit. By the way guys, if you enjoyed this, please like this video so that other women can get this help and get this knowledge too. I am so, so excited guys. We are like a few subscribers away from hitting 10,000 on YouTube. Thank you so much for your support on all of these platforms, for sharing, for your compliments. They really mean so much to me. So thank you for being here. How do you balance feminine and masculine energy? And how do you know that you're balanced, XO? Hey girl, so great question. The way that you balance this is deciding when to show up with certain energies. When it comes to your career, when it comes to things such as your goals, this is when you wanna use that masculine energy, the planning, the thinking, the doing, using logic, making important life decisions, you use your masculine energy. When you feel that someone has disrespected your boundaries, when you feel that you are not being treated well, you use a little bit of the dark feminine energy and the masculine energy. And this comes out when you need to protect yourself and when you need to really lean forward. Your feminine energy, you shift into this when you are in your relationship. So when you're with your man. Let's say that, excuse me guys, this kombucha is so carbonated. So let's say that you 
come home from work and you've been in your masculine energy, go, go, go all day. As soon as you're with your man, this is when you want to get into your feminine energy, when you can let loose, when you can relax. You know that you're balanced when your body feels good. If you feel that you are stressed or overwhelmed, that is an indicator you need to get into your feminine energy. You can dance, you can do something creative such as painting, cooking. If you feel that you are not really seeing any um, success or any output maybe in your business, this is when you know that you need some more of that masculine energy. Great question. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, I love being a passenger princess. Yes, <laughs> girl, me too. <laughs> it's so nice. You like you can just look out the window. You can just relax. <laughs> hey, beautiful. Hey. How did you get to be so wise so young? Thank you so much for that sweet compliment. Um, you know what, when I was in college, I had this light bulb moment where I started learning about masculine and feminine energy and it clicked for me because I realized I was so out of alignment. I was showing up as a woman that was not really my authentic self. I was in overdrive. I always felt stressed and I always felt anxious. I started to tap into my feminine energy and I felt completely different. I started having all these creative business ideas, feeling beautiful, attracting these amazing opportunities, amazing people, and I realized this is what I've been missing my whole life. And I invest in personal development so heavily. I listen to more podcasts than music. I read about three to four books a month. I have really, really great mentors, and I am committed to learning and growing as much as possible. It's addicting to me now. I genuinely enjoy leveling up and learning from people. I feel that we have so much free access to wisdom and knowledge nowadays that I am happy to take advantage of it. I also take a lot of road trips. I drive to LA a lot because I'm in Las Vegas and I am just listening to books and podcasts on that drive so it really helps. You speak the truth. Thank you. <laughs> Let's see. Um, oops, sorry guys, I keep scrolling. You're so beautiful, thank you. If a man says an overweight woman is a deal breaker, is that offensive? I'm not overweight. So, you have to decide if that is a deal breaker for you. Because if he says this, what he is communicating is physical looks are extremely, extremely important. Does he have other values besides this? If he's communicating that it is more about looks that he is concerned, that is a red flag. If he is communicating that he values a woman who prioritizes health and fitness and taking care of her body, that can be seen as a green flag. So I'd have to see the man's overall values to really answer that question better. You are so beautiful. My stress is gone. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Um, what about addressing something that you're upset about in a feminine way? Yeah, girl, great question. So the way that you do this is using a little bit of that dark feminine energy. And I have a YouTube video about this if you want to go and watch it. But you have to really do inner work, meaning that you have to heal and grow to be in such a level that you are empowered to stand up for yourself and you know what your values are. You know when they are being when you are being disrespected and not being treated in a way. And the way that you do this is by overcoming the fear of upsetting others, overcoming being a people pleaser. You can speak from a place of love, of honesty, and of having your strong boundaries and standards. So I'll try to give you an example. Let's say that, um, so let's say that you are meeting with a friend who is consistently late when you guys maybe go to cafes or go to dinner, and this really bothers you. The way that you address this in a feminine way is you speak from your body and you would say something such as, I really enjoy meeting with you. I love getting together for our girl nights. However, I feel that you continuously show up late and I feel that my time is disrespected when I put in work and effort to always get here on time and really respect your time. Do you feel that there is a solution where we can meet on time or do you have a suggestion for something else that we can do to fix this issue? It's really bothering me and I value our friendship too much to let this get in the way. 
So you address it from a place that's not accusing, that is not um, being degrading or disrespectful. You let your friend or whoever you're having a problem with know what's going on in your body and you guys can solve it together. There's no ultimatums, there's no um, deal breakers involved, it's just a place where there's a possible solution and it's coming from a place of openness and love. Sorry guys, there's a lot of comments here, so if I'm missing your comment, please go ahead and ask it again and I'll be able to see it. Why are the dusty men here? <laughs> this is for women, go build something. <laughs> Girl, that's my favorite comment. My um, demographics is usually like 95% female, but lately it's been like 90% female, 10% male. So there's a lot of guys in the comments here. And I'm sorry guys, I know that sometimes you ask me to make more content for you, but I really focus on the women here. The knowledge and expertise that I have is mainly for women, but I'm happy to have you here and I will try to answer your questions the best that I can. Can I please be a mediator? I want to remove men. <laughs> Brooke, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Can you repeat the five qualities again for those taking notes? Yeah, definitely. So the five green flags that you want to look for in men. Number one was someone who um, is able to hype you up and wants to see you as the best woman that you can be. Number two is he has a growth mindset and he is committing, committed to doing inner work, to healing, and really being his best self. Number three was that he has good quality friends, mature friends, who want the best for him and want the best for you guys. Number four is he has a, um, he has a guidance that is higher than himself. So whether this is believing in God, believing in the universe, he has that spirituality side. Number five is that he has strong masculine energy, meaning that he initiates, um, he pursues you, he plans, and you feel that you can really be in your feminine energy. So those are the five. Oh, let's see. Should I still give him a chance if he told me he's a year older than he actually is? Ooh, this is a good question. So did you ask him why did he not tell you the truth up front? because I'm very curious what his response is. Minamei, if, if he did tell you that, can you go ahead and type that in the comments? Because I'm really curious. So if he is already lying to you up front, that is a red flag. I wouldn't say to break the relationship off completely, but be very mindful and let him know that honesty is one of your top values and you, he's going to have to work to rebuild your trust again. If he's lying about his age for um, a reason, maybe he's embarrassed or um, he just wishes that he was older or something, be mindful of that because that is an indicator that he's probably not secure in himself 100%. As I said, that's going to cause problems later. You want someone who is secure in himself and who has values such as honesty and integrity. So I wouldn't say that it's the end of the relationship because he lied about his age, but try to figure out why it was that he lied. Hey, my love. Hey. Ooh. How can I be more in my light feminine? Great question, girl. And I just posted a video on my YouTube channel about this. Five qualities that a woman in her light feminine energy has. But the short answer that I have for you is to do things that feel good for your body and strive for happiness. So what was it for you that as a kid felt really good? Was it dancing? Was it painting? Was it cooking a fun meal with your parents? Do something that as a kid made you so happy. This helps you connect back to that light, that relaxed feminine energy. If you can really nourish your body by filling it with good foods, with um, healthy media, with healthy friendships and relationships, it's going to put you more in your light feminine energy where you're at ease, where you're flowing, where you feel really happy. Excuse me guys, and beautiful. I love that question. Oh my gosh, Maya, girl, this question I love. I have trouble being in my feminine energy because I always want to be in control. Any advice? Yeah, so oh, I struggle with this too. That's why I can totally relate to you. I loved being in control because when I was a kid, I felt that I did not have a lot of control and power. 
for me, I had to realize that being in control was making me in my masculine energy. It was making me anxious, making me always in my head, um, just not really feeling happy. And I realized, you know what, whatever happens in life, whoever stays, whoever goes, that's out of my control. What I can do is be the best version of myself, really connect to my feminine energy, and whoever stays and remains in my life, that is what is meant for me, and that's what I'm going to enjoy the most. So I started releasing control. I stopped trying to um, create my own outcomes. I just let life happen, and I use my control in other areas. So for example, I own a couple of businesses. That is where I pour my controlling, more mothering, masculine energy into. In relationships, I release control because I'm able to have an outlet for that somewhere else. So Maya, try to find something for you. I suggested this before. Maybe it's something so simple as getting a plant. You have control over the health of the plant, and that is where you pour that type of energy into. Oh, back to the question about your man lying about his age. You haven't confronted him about it yet, but you're not sure why he lied. Yeah, I would try to figure out why it was that he lied because it is a red flag, but talk with him first before trying to make up stories or accusing him. None of these things happen for men in their 20s, by the way. Um, I personally do not agree with that because one, my brother, um, he's an amazing guy and he's in his very early 20s. And he is very, he's a very, very strong masculine energy man. He has every single quality that I talked about. I have a lot of guy friends who have these qualities too. It is not about your age. It is about the level of awareness, consciousness, and effort that you put in to grow and be the best version of yourself. There can be someone in their 30s who is way less mature than someone in their 20s because they are not open to bettering themselves and learning how to heal and grow. He lied about his name. Who does that? Okay. <laughs> Girls, some of these guys, okay, maybe keep, maybe date some other guys. If these guys are lying to you about their name, what else are they going to lie to you about? Is he healing? Is, oh, is healing the inner child related to being in your feminine energy? La glory? Absolutely. Inner work, healing your inner child is the only way to access your divine feminine energy, the top level of your feminine energy. There's so much to this, I'll have to make another video. And here's an example why. If you have blocked emotion and trauma in your body, which is you, if you have not healed or done any work to work through that trauma, it is sitting in your body still. It's blocking your emotion, it's blocking your potential. That emotion gets stored in your hips, most of it. The energy of sensuality, of your creative, your feminine energy, that is also connected to your hips. If you have blocked emotion in your hips, it is blocking that sensuality, creative region of your feminine energy. You cannot tap into it fully. That is why you have to heal your inner child, do healing and growing work so that you can really be in your feminine energy. Okay guys, I'm gonna take one more question and then I'm gonna go. Hey love, hey. Oh, oh my gosh, I'm sorry guys, there's so much question. Um. What can I do to feel safe being feminine? So, oh, sorry guys. So feeling safe being feminine, this comes down to doing that healing and inner work. So working with a therapist, really affirming to yourself that it is safe for you to heal, it is safe for you to grow and to relax in your feminine energy, that's number one. But also surrounding yourself with people who allow you to feel safe. So a masculine, healthy man, who provides that safe place for you to be in your feminine energy, that's a very big key too. If men are visual, oh, okay, you know what guys, I'm gonna, there's a lot of questions coming in, so I'll stay on for a little bit longer. So if men are visual, why is wanting good looks a red flag? It's actually not a red flag. Good looks, they show youth, they show how well you take care of yourself. I think it's a, a very um, important aspect to look for in your partner. What's your take on a woman having male friends or still wanting to be friends with their ex? Oh, this is such a good question. So for both genders, man or woman, I do not believe that it is the best and the healthiest to have close friends of the opposite gender or to still be friends with your ex. Of course, every person is different. Every condition is different. 
why not protect your relationship to the best of its ability? Having close friends, having um, your partner still being friends with their ex, that is not protecting the relationship to the best of its ability. So for me, that is not something that um, I will ever want in a relationship, but I understand everyone is different, so what works for you is best. Is it a red flag when he does not put a title on what you have with them? So it's a red flag if it's been months and months without a title. If you are continuing to invest your feminine energy, your time into a relationship and there's no title, there's no sense of direction, then that is a red flag. You want someone who knows where the relationship is going, otherwise you're wasting time, you're wasting effort. Okay guys, I will take a couple more questions and I'm gonna hop off here. What does it mean when a man cheats on you? So, this is such a heavy question, and there's a couple reasons. The number one reason that I believe is the most common way that, or most common reason people cheat is because they are insecure in themselves. They need to get validation from an outside source. Um, I know that there is so much cheating nowadays. There's also so many insecure people nowadays. You can have the best partner in the world. It's why you see the most beautiful woman getting cheated on. It's because they are with a man who knows that that woman is not at the, is a way higher level than they are. They feel that they are not worthy of her. They need to go and build their worth up from a secondary source. And that's why there's so much cheating. It's why it's so important to be with a partner who is secure in themselves, whether you are a man or a woman. What are the characteristics of a male in his feminine energy? So, ooh, okay, a man in his feminine energy, guys, this is the last question that I'm gonna take, then I'm gonna go. A man in his feminine energy, you will notice that they are leaning back rather than leaning forward. That's the key indicator. So there's not a lot of initiating dates, there's not a lot of problem solving, um, there's a lot of wanting to just be lazy and wanting you to do the work if you are the woman, and it is someone who is still wounded inside. So they do not feel safe. They do not feel comfortable thriving in their masculine energy. Um, I know that this might sound a little controversial, but a man who is not emotionally mature or cannot be emotionally vulnerable is an indicator that he is in his feminine energy. A healthy masculine man knows how to balance his emotions and he understands that he is not weak for showing emotions. So those are a few indicators. Why are good? <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much for being here today. All of your amazing questions and comments. I have loved talking with you today. I will be back here on Tuesday to live stream. Let me know any questions or video suggestions that you would like to see next. I hope that you guys have a great weekend, a great Halloween, and I will see you very soon.